Hey guys, it's David from Automotive Press. As you know, I love 4Runners because I've owned so many of them. But this particular version, the 6th gen, has been controversial because we went from naturally aspirated V6 engine to turbocharged 4-cylinder with or without hybrid. And a lot of you guys said, hey David, this won't be reliable anymore. I don't want to buy the new gen 4Runner. But you know what? There's many, many reasons and many factors why cars may not be reliable over long term. And a lot of it has nothing to do with turbocharged engines or hybrid systems. It's actually mostly to do with lack of maintenance. So I'm actually inclined to say that this version of the 4Runner could still last a very long time, maybe even a lifetime, if you take care of it, even when you compare it to naturally aspirated engine vehicles like the 5th gen 4Runner, because if you ignore that vehicle, even with a naturally aspirated engine, it can still go bad in a few years, as I will explain to you in a few minutes. So let me explain to you why the 6th gen 4Runner with a turbocharged engine with or without hybrid could still last a lifetime and be very reliable over a long time. Let's go. Welcome back. So this is the 6th gen 4Runner now with the turbocharged 2.4 liter 4 cylinder engine with or without hybrid system. And of course the 5th gen 4Runner was the one with the 4 liter V6 engine that's been around for a very long time. And I made many videos about the 5th gen because I think that's perhaps the most reliable vehicle in the world. And I still think that it is number one in my list of vehicles to buy that will give you trouble for your ownership for years to come. But having said all that, is it possible that this new version, the 6th gen 4Runner with a turbo engine could still last a long time without giving trouble? Yes, it is possible. And that's because the main reason why cars tend to become unreliable have nothing to do with the actual powertrain, but it's to do with the maintenance of it. So if you actually ignore the maintenance or you don't follow the maintenance schedule or the maintenance schedule isn't sufficient enough, then even the most reliable cars can go wrong and can break down. So for example, I had two friends who owned a Toyota Sienna and a RAV4 and both of them forgot to follow the maintenance schedule and actually didn't do maintenance for like a year to year and a half. And guess what? Both of them died. The engine ceased and it was not repairable, not fixable, and they had to literally dispose those vehicles. So it's possible to wreck a very reliable, proven vehicle if you just don't follow the maintenance properly. So in the case of a 6th gen 4Runner, for example, yes, we do have a 2.4 liter turbo. This one doesn't have the hybrid system. And if you just look at it and think about it, you might think, oh, this is way too complicated because it's turbo four, it's a small engine, it's always overworking. But that's not really the case. The turbocharger system in this particular unit is proven. It's actually pretty simple. And this basic engine, which is a 2.4 liter four cylinder engine, has also been around for a while and it's been used on many cars for the last several years from Toyota and Lexus. So there's nothing complicated about the engine itself. If you listen to Ahmed from Car Care Nut, he also confirms that this engine is simple to operate, simple to maintain, and that it can be very, very reliable. But the trick here is the fact that because he has turbocharged engine, you do have to really follow the maintenance schedule. And I don't mean the schedule that's in the manual from Toyota because they say something like 10,000 miles or roughly 16,000 kilometers for oil change. And that's not really correct, especially for turbocharged engines. I would just basically cut everything in half that's in the owner's manual for recommended intervals. With exception of maybe transmission fluid probably can stay pretty close to what they're recommending but everything else should be cut in half. So instead of 10,000 miles, change oils at 5,000 miles or roughly 8,000 kilometers or so, uh, and do all the other fluid, all the other checks and balances also half the time in terms of recommended intervals, because that way you can pretty well guarantee that you're going to maintain the car, uh, especially the oil change, because that's the one that tends to really kill the engine if ignored or if it's not followed properly. So with the 2.4 turbo, Yes, it is more complicated than before. The four liter engine was very simple to operate and that engine definitely will last a lifetime, even with the minimal maintenance. But even this engine can last a lifetime. You just have to be much more conscious of how you do the oil change and other maintenance. Uh, the other four liter engine from the fifth gen, you can probably ignore it and it might still last quite a long time. This one, you definitely cannot ignore it. And you gotta make sure that you do your oil change no more than 5,000 miles, maybe even less if you really want to keep it for a long time. And also check all the other fluids as well as all the other maintenance and just basically cut it in half, whatever the automakers are telling you to do. And I believe they can last a very long time because aside from the engine itself, everything else about this vehicle is still a very much a proven platform. It's a proven system built in Tahara plant in Japan, which is probably the best factory in the world. 
I mentioned about the quality control and the manufacturing quality before in my other videos, but you know, the gaps and everything is perfect. The body panels are well built, well engineered, and also welded properly in their body shop. And the paint job is pretty thick and durable. Everything else about the vehicle is pretty simple and many of the components are proven uh, because it sets on a TNGAF platform, which has been around for a long time. So there's really nothing that I'm concerned about for uh, durability and reliability because these components have been around for a long time and they're also built by Tahara plant suppliers, which are proven as well. They've been around for a long time. They have been suppliers for Toyota for a long time and everything from the shocks, the suspension, even the transmissions, the seats and interior, everything is like first class standard because that's what you would expect for cars that's built in Japan, that's built off Tahara plants. So the body in terms of rusting, in terms of durability, I have no concerns at all. And in fact, the frame underneath, which have a different design from before, have also gone through some major transformation in terms of engineering. So they are now really well protected from potential rusting uh, and corrosion because they have been re-engineered for manufacturing to make sure that everything is protected and coated properly. And so you're not gonna see the rusting of the frames at all. That's not gonna be an issue with this generation. And like I said, everything else underneath the vehicle are all built and engineered by proven suppliers. And so I know for sure they will last forever. So coming back to the engine for a moment, Again, you might still question the long-term reliability factor to do with turbocharged engines. But again, keep in mind that turbocharged engines have been around for a very long time. And most people forget that things have changed a lot. So for example, in the old days, if you have a turbo cars and you turn off the engine, then they shut off the oil to the turbochargers and therefore they tend to burn out and therefore the turbos fail at early stages. But nowadays the system is so well engineered that when you turn off the engine, it doesn't cut off the cooling and the oil to the turbochargers. It continues to run and circulate until turbochargers can cool down. And therefore, there's no issues with the turbochargers actually burning out or something getting burnt inside the turbocharger. That's not going to happen anymore. The most that we see these days in terms of problem with turbochargers, sometimes the wastegate and the valves and so forth. But in this particular section, Forerunner, it's a very simple system for all the associated uh, components uh, that are attached to turbocharger and the engine itself, as I mentioned many times, it's also proven it's been around for a long time. So you take care of it, follow the maintenance schedule, but cut it in half. And I'm very, very sure that this 4Runner could still last a very long time. It is a Toyota after all. It is built in Japan after all. It is engineered by the same people that engineered the fifth gen 4Runners. So they know what they're doing and they over engineered these vehicles to the point where it's almost ridiculous if you can actually look at the behind the scene background the work that they have to do. And I'm very familiar with how they engineer this vehicle. I've spoken to the chief engineer a number of times and I'm very confident that it's built like a tank. It will last a long time. Just take care of it and make sure that you follow my advice, which is to take the maintenance schedule from the car companies and cut it in half. And it should not give you any problem at all. So does that mean the sixth gen can last as long as a fifth gen? In principle, yes, but having said that, the fifth gen 4Runner with a naturally aspirated four liter engine, V6 engine, that thing will last forever for sure with minimal maintenance. And that car has been around for such a long time that everything to do with that vehicle has been proven. It's robust and very trouble free. So of course, if you happen to own a fifth gen 4Runner or if you're going to buy one used, then you have a, a full confidence that it's gonna last forever. Uh, but I still think that this sixth gen 4Runner could give you many years of a trouble free life if you follow what i mentioned to you in this video so i hope this is helpful to make you feel a little bit better about buying some newer models with the turbocharged engines i still have faith in toyota that this system has been over engineered and over manufactured and will really be a solid ownership i will say that the non-hybrid version because it's simpler it doesn't have the hybrid battery and so forth will likely outlast the hybrid version but even the hybrid models have been around for a long time and there are many taxis here in vancouver with uh, hybrid system that has gone over 300, 400,000 kilometers. So I'm confident that even with the hybrid system, it will still last a long time. But if you really want to be sure that your foreigner will last a long time, then I would just buy the non-hybrid version. It's simpler, it's a little bit easier to maintain, and just there's less mechanicals and less electronics, and therefore it could last even longer than the hybrid system. I hope this was helpful for you guys. Let me know in the comments below what you think. You might or might not agree with me, and this is my unbiased engineer's perspective. And I'm sure that Ahmed from Car Care Nut will agree with everything I'm saying here as well. Please give me a thumbs up and consider making some comments. And if you haven't done so yet, 
would you kindly subscribe as well. Until next video, I'm signing off for now. Thank you so much.